Hey guys, on today's episode, we are pulling out a Ferrari 328 GTS that's been sitting for a very long time in sort of this barn-ish area where the guy's a landscaper, so there's stuff piled everywhere. I saw it on a couple text messages from Dan at turn seven. We are trying to find it right now. My GPS is going absolutely nuts because we're in the woods, but uh, we're gonna find this thing, bring it back to the shop, do everything we can to get it back on the road. Today on this episode, Drive and Protect. The 1986 Ferrari 328 GTS came with a naturally aspirated and transversely mounted 3.2 liter V8 Dino engine with four valves per cylinder, producing 270 horsepower, 231 foot-pounds of torque, and a top speed of around 166 miles with a zero to 60 in 5.5 seconds. In today's market, these are highly coveted as they tend to be easier to work on as much of the maintenance can be done without lowering the engine. They have the classic Ferrari design, it's red and a manual, so it's as good as gold these days. So getting it out of the work shed and cleaning it up is right up my alley. Bought this car in the early 90s, went for a good deal, good price, and uh, I've enjoyed it since, since then with my kids. So I had the Yankee plates with the name Babe on it several years back where I parked it. It's time to put it back on the road and enjoy it. The first thing we needed to do was get the car off the old stands and onto the ground safely. I've been working on the As we waited for the flatbed, I couldn't help but check out all the wine presses and pumps and tools and machines surrounding the Ferrari. I love exploring what's around the cars as much as finding the cars themselves. It's like an episode of American Pickers with lost cars. It's usually an untouched time capsule like the 280 SL we pulled out of a garage after 37 years. It had alkyd-based paint, rubbing alcohol, lawn tools, torches sitting next to lighter fluid, crazy stuff that you just don't see anymore. Anyways, Joe's place had that same kind of vibe. With the Ferrari now on the flatbed, Joe mentioned he had another car sitting in a bay where he cleans and quarters deer meat. People, I, I cannot make this up. So I was like, uh, okay, what, by the way, what is it? He said, oh, it's a Lamborghini. So we walked through his tree farm and back to a super dilapidated bay. Well, you got cars everywhere. How can you tell me about this? <laughs> yeah, this has been here for 20 years. It's a Lamborghini Espada. It's a four-seater and that's a tall cylinder. I don't think uh, I've ever seen one of these in real life. This is, uh, this is the beauty of the car right here. And that's where the 12 cylinder engine is. Unbelievable. Six dual Webers. Take this stuff up. Next, we headed back to the ammo studio. Wow, look at that house. I'm like a machine. I can go like two minutes without eating. To drop off the Ferrari in a sea of lost cars I found over the last two weeks. Now, over the next six days, Jason Rose and Kevin Brown are coming to Connecticut to hang out at the MO studio and to work on some cars. But what they don't know is that we're going to be pushing the envelope and detailing cars that need all the help they can get to motivate these owners to get them back on the road or to someone who will. In other words, there's no cream puffs here. These are all complete disasters, the Ferrari being the first of our adventure. But be sure to subscribe to see the Audi Grand Sport transformation. That was probably the biggest one we've done in a long time. The Datsun 510 full car 50-50, the MG reveal to his dad, super cool, and the Tornado wedding detail surprise for my buddy Pat, who'll be driving to his upcoming wedding in his dad's car. Super fun stuff, so click the notification button to watch. This, this is my... I have a piece of You have a piece of Ferrari now. <laughs> After a quick tour of the finished ammo studio, we moved a few cars outside to free up some working space inside and then rearranged the Ferrari on the lift. Step one, of course, is to remove the wheels and power wash the paint, so enjoy. Next, I filled the foam gum with Boost and foam, and Kevin laid down a thick coat, and we allowed it to soak for a few minutes. Yeah, buddy. 
Just then, my guy Devin from Brendel's Towing dropped off the Tornado we just mentioned that now holds the record for the largest mouse nest ever found in a trunk. This thing was that absolutely was disgusting, horrible. but we did bring it back to life for Pat's wedding. The video is coming soon, and it is really, really cool. Back inside, Kevin, Jason, and Dan are working all the tight spots with a brush and brute diluted with water in a spray bottle to kind of flush out the loosened debris as they're sort of agitating it while I was washing the larger areas with a microfiber towel. With the car fully up on the lift and my Terminator glasses on, I soaked the undercarriage and boost, and we all sort of scrubbed the undercarriage, the wheel wells, the brakes, the suspension with dual density brushes before Jason heavily rinsed. While Dan was drying the undercarriage with compressed air, Kevin started cleaning the famous five-star wheels that were in desperate need of some love. To do this, he cut up some Scotch-Brite scrubbers into small strips based on how roached out these wheels actually were. Now, if you've never seen Kevin clean really dirty wheels, it's quite a sight. First, he focuses on the rubber, and I'm not just saying the sidewalls. I mean, everything gets covered in plumb wheel and tire cleaner and scrubbed vigorously. It's completely insane. He even does the treads. Next, he scrubbed the back side of the wheel itself with the same scrub pad because of the intense corrosion. The scrubber will have a better chance of pulling up all the baked on brake dust. Now, for the record, don't do this on most wheels. This is sort of like pulling out a bazooka as a last resort, short of a full strength acid, which I don't really recommend, especially on new floors and in a non-designated area. So keep that in mind. During the rinse, check out how much junk came off the wheels. This was just after one round of cleaning. Afterwards, of course, he reapplied plumb to the front and agitated with my wheel brush. Then he used the scrub pad again on the wheel lips and a little bit on the spokes as well. So I'll spare you the 26 minutes and 33 seconds of film that we have of Kevin doing one wheel, but let's just agree that they look great for their condition. With that, we all hopped in to clean all the other wheels while Kevin scrubbed all the lug nuts on the detail carts. You gotta love Kevin. Also keep in mind that when you're working with the wheels off, it can be helpful to screw the lug nuts into the rotors or the hubs to protect the threads from getting water in them and sort of cleaning out all the lube that's originally there. Now with the Ferrari back down, we all performed our own test panels. Okay, so here's what's going on. Jason a little while ago did a test spot and we came up with a plan that we're gonna be using the yellow wool pad with blue liquid and then for the second step, we're gonna be using a yellow foam pad and yellow liquid. Now, here's kind of the fun part. You can tell that this car needs to be repainted. You can tell that it will, was repainted also in its lifetime. There's two stage paint here as well. You're working with your buddies, you're having a blast. The car's gonna come out great, but here's kind of the other interesting part. If you look up here, we talked about that earlier. That's the UV sort of just totally degrading. Now let's just pretend that we give this a score of 10% gloss. I'm making these numbers up. And this one here is a 50% gloss. So you have a spread of 40 points. This is just a random example. I just polished this area, which is single stage paint. See the line, remember we showed it at the beginning of the video? So let's say now this is 40% gloss, I'm making these numbers up, and this is 50%. So now you have a spread of 10. The point I'm trying to make is, you can even polish a car that's completely destroyed. And look at this, it's flaking off right now. And you can make it so that it's not a massive difference. It's not an eyesore like this. To me, that's kind of fun. What's the point? Maybe he gets motivated, the owner, and looks at it and goes like, oh my gosh, I remember. Well, it looks to look 10 years ago. Now I'm gonna get it repainted. The goal here is just to kind of tickle him and say, hey, remember this car? Let's get it back on the road. Or maybe he sells it or whatever he's gonna do with it. This little bit that we're doing, I think is gonna motivate him to kind of make a decision and hopefully get this back on the road. One of the things that bothered me was uh, the back part of the car was peeling a little bit. That kind of bothered me. So I, had, I didn't even want to drive it. I like that. I wanted the car to be perfectly nice. We'll get there. With that, I added some yeah. masking tape to the door to get a true 50-50 so we could see the before and after clearly. The results of our tests were absolutely fantastic, so we spent most of the night polishing as much as we could of the Ferrari. hours later, at some point, we just sort of lost Dan. As it turns out, he went upstairs to the kitchen to surprise us with a homemade pasta dinner in celebration of the Ferrari detail. An Italian car, an Italian boy, an Italian dinner, what could be better? Detailers in the kitchen now, that is a YouTube show.
Once Dan's dinner was ready, we invited Steve and Laura from across the street so we could have a late night dinner with our quote unquote street family. And then Dan yelled downstairs something in Italian. I have no idea why we were making our final plans on paint correction process, etc. But the smell was so good that I had a pretty good idea that it was chow time. After our amazing dinner, we started up again on the Ferrari by dressing the faded out trim with Frame Pro. Both the side mirrors and side louvers were coated. On a side note, this entire time we couldn't figure out how to get the engine hood open because it was, it was stuck, we have no idea. But eventually the mouse or whatever was holding on for dear life opened up so we could do a quick cleanup now that we had access to it. Once finally opened, you can see that some of the parts are not fully secured on the engine, meaning the manifold, etc. So we use frothy instead of heavy water to avoid the obvious issues. Likewise, at the same time, my new flow through Wooly is absolutely amazing and perfect for wheels and odd jobs like this one. I'll have much more on this later. Once all the cleaning and the wiping and of course compressed air was done, we actually vacuumed. There's a little trunk back there. I didn't know that. We vacuumed that out and that looked amazing as well. When we were done, everything inside or underneath the engine compartment looked fantastic. Now the inside of the car is just a total hot mess. Parts are disassembled. There's mold, there's dirt, you name it, it is in there. To start, Dan vacuumed while I cleaned the leather with lather and a scrub brush. Now, as you can see, the white parts are actually mold and need to be removed if anyone's gonna work on this in the future safely. Okay, so I can imagine most of you are wondering why we would detail this or these types of neglected cars. And the answer is pretty simple. These are the ones that actually need all the help that they can get. Every one of us cleans and maintains daily driven cars as our business, etc. But these here are the ones that actually push the limits where you learn the most. And if you have your closest friends with you, the ones that are definitely the most fun. But yeah, fine, okay, they're not perfect, not even close, but I can promise that the car is in better shape than it arrived. And if that motivates the owner to get it back on the road or in the hands of somebody who will, then the years of detailing tricks and all the band-aids we used will have been put to good use. Finally, Kevin reinstalled the wheels and Dan applied mud tire dressing. For protection and just to slow the rate of oxidation on this exposed paint, I'm using the new Reflex Pro Finishing Wax, which is a Carnuba infused with Reflex Pro. It's super easy on and super easy off, and of course gives you that wet look from the Carnuba with more strength from the blended coating characteristics. I applied it and Jason removed it. The before and after on this project was absolutely amazing, super exciting to see, especially on the sun faded and swirled out paint. More importantly, to watch and to learn from the two best detailers on planet Earth is invaluable to me and I hope all of you watching. I also filmed a few interviews with the boys and asked them questions about ATA 200, profitability, and things they wish they knew when they started detailing for all you pros and weekend warriors out there. Be sure to sign up for my email list to find out when these private videos will be released. How much time is it going to take me to this you know, turn signal lens and this front of the fender? 15 minutes times two. Well guys, we're all done with the GTS and this thing looks a thousand times better. But more importantly, I do think we motivated Joe to hopefully get this back on the road or maybe sell it, who knows. But we did pull it out of the barn and man, this was a blast. So I wanna give a huge thank you to Dan Mealy at Turn7AutoCare.com. Of course, Jason Rose at Rupes USA and Buff Daddy, Kevin Brown, BuffDaddy.com. Make sure you subscribe. We're gonna be doing that tornado this week. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Here is a sneak peek of some of the upcoming restoration episodes, so be sure to subscribe. And I'm happy to announce that the detailing simulator video game is officially being released on April 13th, 2022. It's been two years of work to build the most realistic detailing simulator and of course the downloaded content to get access to the ammo studio, all the special tools, and of course the supercar. So big thank you to everyone who has emailed me over the past two years. It's here and I'm super proud. So hope you enjoy and thanks for your support. And on a side note, I love what I get to do every single day. I'm incredibly privileged and I'm grateful for your subscription. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and be well.